What's up guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. Welcome back to the all-wheel drive Honda build series. Today we're gonna to be disassembling our factory all-wheel drive transmission to just inspect it and see what's going on with it. Dale is the man when it comes to building these transmissions. He's built transmissions on a couple of the cars that you guys have seen on the channel. Josh's MR2, it makes like 1200 horsepower. Bottom eight second MR2, absolute beast. And also our boy Kev from Four Bangers, he built his trans, but let's go inside and say what's up and check it out. Hey, good morning. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me, man. Hey, for sure. How you doing? Good. Good to yeah, see yeah, you, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we got sure. the uh, all-wheel drive trans already ready to go. That's right. Honda CRV all-wheel drive transmission. We're going to do a tear down today and inspection. And, awesome, um, man. Yeah. Well, walk us through, I guess, the, the process of what, what we're going to be going through. All right. So first, I'm going to remove all of the accessories, the shifter mechanism, the speed sensor, remove the transfer case, brackets, and um, remove the detents. Then we're going to remove the casing. And then once that is done, then I'm going to inspect the interior, make sure everything is nice. And I'll give you guys more information when I get to that part. All right, so about to start the teardown process. This is the 2003 Honda CRV transmission. Um, first thing I do is remove all of the exterior components before I actually get into it. So let's start by taking off the bracket. All right, next thing I'm going to do is remove the transfer case. Next thing I'm going to take off is the speed sensor and then the shifter mechanism. Now these speed sensors, you have to be really careful when you remove them because they may break. So you have to pry it very slowly so that way you don't destroy the speed sensor. Shifter mechanism has an Allen right here. It's an Allen uh, lock or Allen nut. And four 10 millimeters at the top. Make sure it's neutral before you actually try to remove it because it's going to be very difficult to take out if you don't. Comes right out. And um, I don't know if you want to get a tight shot here, but I always check the shift arm for wear. And you can actually see there's some wear on the shift arm. That tells you a lot about the transmission. Yeah, this one has some wear. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Remove the dowel pins. And then I'm going to remove these three detents. Removing the detent balls with a magnet. Also remove the bearing, the clutch release bearing. This one has some oil in it. Flip the transmission up on its face and remove this bolt right here that actually holds the reverse in place. That's the reverse pin. There's a clip at the top that holds the countershaft bearing in place. I'm gonna remove, the, open up that clip. Always open that clip before you actually try to remove the cover because the bearings and everything, the gears are gonna get stuck in the cover. You don't want that. So you wanna make sure this opens and drops. And then I'm going to start to remove the case bolts. All right, so once you have all the case bolts removed, now it's time to remove the cover. And again, always check to make sure that this clip is open at the top before you start to remove the cover. Right, 
let's see what we got inside. All right, so on the cover, I usually check to see if there's any buildup, any debris, or any particles that sometimes gets trapped inside of this um, baffle, oil baffle. Now that we have the casing open, it's time to look and see what we have going on inside. First thing I usually check is the magnet. The magnet tells you everything about the transmission. If you have any buildup, any broken parts, it usually gets trapped on the magnet. And this one isn't too bad. This is just normal buildup, so it's not too bad. And I feel it to feel it if there are any particles in there, nothing like that. So we're good so far. I also check the inner portion of the case. The case is really clean. And also check the oil, feel the oil for, the, for its consistency. If it's grainy or if it's really smooth, it tells you about the wear of the transmission. So overall, this transmission is not in bad shape. All right, so we're going to start taking, this, this, taking it apart, and then I'll go through the steps of what I look for, and I'll let you guys know exactly what I see. I'll start first by removing the reverse mechanism. And I always like to break these instead of putting a tool on there, putting a gun on it, because you don't want to mess it up. And then I use my gun. Removing the reverse assembly and then the reverse idler. I always like to check the reverse idler for wear as well because these really get banged up after a time. This one is not too bad. Can we use this? Next, I'm going to pull the entire stack out and I'm going to lay it right here so you can see it. Now, this is the first time anyone has been in this transmission, and I could tell just from breaking the seal. I can also tell, and a lot of people make a mistake when reinstalling these um, shims, uh, washers I should say, they flip this washer upside down. One's concaved, the concave one goes first, bevel edge goes down, and then this flat washer goes on top. Now I've seen it where people do this, and that's incorrect. You can't get a proper end play if you have this installed cor incorrectly. Let's get a shot of that there. Yeah. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is remove the diff. All right, and as mentioned earlier, this is an all-wheel drive setup, so it has a transfer gear. It also has the speedo drive gear. O2 to O4s use a speedo drive gear, and the O5, O6 use a magnetic pickup, which reads off of the third gear. So we know this is an O2 to O4. Casing looks good. No debris, no particles. It's not bad. Okay, next thing I do is I check the shift forks. You want to check the shift forks for wear? I usually pass my finger. It's visible. You can see visible wear on the shift forks in these areas where it makes contact with the sleeves and where it makes contact with the shift mechanism. So this is your one, two shift fork. This one looks very good. Three, four shift fork usually takes a beating because that's where people like to have fun, shifting third and fourth. And being that this is a CRV, people don't really race stock CRV, so this one is in good shape as well. Shoot, I just bang gears in one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, everyone likes it, right? And then finally we have the five reverse. And this one looks good as well. No excessive wear. I check these areas for wear. And also in the middle here where it makes contact with the shift arm. Looks good. So now you have your stacks. You have your counter shaft stack, and then you have your main shaft stack. So we have both shafts here. This is your main shaft stack, and this is your counter shaft stack. Um, first thing I want to do is go through the, let's set this one aside. We're going to go through the main shaft first. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of what the gear set looks like, you have first gear. This is your reverse. Second, third, fourth, fifth. A clear indicator that I use whenever I take these things apart is by telling, looking at the shift arm and see how much wear is on the shift arm. You can see it has a lot of wear. I don't know if you can catch that. Yeah. yeah. But um, that's an indication that someone's been living in third and fourth gear on this thing. And you can also see that impression on the hub. The hub is scorched up on the inside. That's when you start misshifting gears, etc. And this synchro is a little bit on the low side. See how it's touching the gear? Mm -hmm. So we definitely need synchros in this one. I also check to see how the slider, some people call it slider or the sleeve, how it slides between third and fourth. It's not sticking. 
and also I check the engagement for each gear. So the engagement of these teeth right here, they should be shaped like a rooftop or arrowhead. Once it starts wearing, it gets smudged. So you want to look for that pointy arrowhead. So this one in the third gear is excellent. The gear itself is in good shape. Synchro is a bit low. This hub I would change because of the impression that I see. And usually that impression is created from the sleeve. So you'd have to change the sleeve and the hub as well. Fourth gear looks good on the engagement and fifth gear is good as well. And fifth gear slides. Now you can see how clean the fifth gear is on the hub. You can see all the debar all the marks on the inside mm -hmm. versus here. Oh yeah, big difference. Yeah. Yeah, so that's an indication that the sleeve and hub is going and time to change that. All right, so this is your countershaft stack, as I mentioned, and I can see that the second gear spring is completely flattened out. Now, this is a good spring, and I usually roll my hands on the spring to feel if there is any imperfections in the spring. And this one, you see, is well-rounded. And if you can catch this, you can see how it's flattened out. Oh, yeah, that's flat? Yeah. Yeah, so this definitely needs a master rebuild set, which includes all new synchros, sleeves, hubs, springs, um, bearings I'm going to check. The bearings don't feel too bad, but usually I do a master rebuild because you don't know the history of the, the transmission, really. And let's go through this so I can show you. This is, this is um, your counter shaft. So this is your first gear. This is your second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. This is a five-speed Honda CRV. And I also check the one-two sleeve. Make sure it's not sticking when it slides. Check the first gear. Now, first gear usually is in great shape unless you're just a crazy driver. <laughs> yeah, first gear is good. The gear itself is good. Now, this is what I was telling you about looking for that arrowhead pointy, pointy area. This is your second gear. If you can catch that, you can see how it's starting to get smudged out, like mushroomed out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's when it's starting to go bad. And that's usually when you start missing gears. When you start missing gears, your synchros are starting to wear and you can't get the synchronized engagement. So you start getting that grind. And over a period of time, it flattens it out. Then eventually what's gonna happen is when you can't get that proper engagement, it's gonna start popping out of gear. All right guys, so that completes the teardown of this Honda CRV 2004 all-wheel drive transmission. Generally, what I found was minor wear. Um, the second gear one, third and fourth one, which is, you know, usual. It's not too bad. So in this situation, what I would suggest is doing a master rebuild, which includes, I'll show you the kit that I have here. This is just an example. This is a Synchrotech master rebuild kit. This is a B-series one. So just ignore the synchros for now, but these are carbon synchros. And the kit includes the synchros, your springs, you have your sleeves. This is one, two sleeve, three, four sleeve, five, in this case, five reverse. Ignore this, this is for um, B-series. It also comes with all your, your seals and all the bearings. So you have your input shaft bearings, you have the uh, input shaft bearing, which is here. You have the counter shaft needle bearing, you have the bearing at the top of the counter shaft and this other bearing at the top as well. So that's going to be the next step. TRC is probably going to go Gear X. All right, guys, we're going to look at the Gear X set. This is the Gear X Quartermaster Drag 2 kit for Honda K Series. This is your main shaft. I want to show you guys a real quick comparison between the Gear X main shaft and, let's say, for example, a Honda OEM main shaft. First thing I want you to look at is the profile. These are both helical cut gears, but you can see the difference in the thickness. Now, these Gear X main shafts are good for at least 800. Actually, the entire set, I've proven them to hold at least 800, 850 horsepower. I just want to show you guys that so you can see the difference. Clear as day, the difference in size. This is the OEM main shaft, this is the Gear X main shaft. Next we have the Gear X first gear, and I'll compare that against the OEM first gear. And again, you can see difference in thickness. So these are by far stronger. If you're making any kind of power and you want something that's reliable, cost effective, this is your second gear. I'd suggest using the Gear X set like TRC is. All right, now this is your third gear, this is your fourth gear. I'm going to show you guys the main shaft third gear for gear X. Main shaft, oh yeah, big difference. Finally, we have the fourth gear. I'll put them side by side. There you have it. So the teardown process is all complete. 
we know the stock transmission isn't going to take us far so we're going to put together this uh, gear x trans which they say it's good for 800 horsepower uh, so that should take us a little further and then from there there's a bunch of different options ppg sequentials all that but we're not probably going to get into that till way further down the line uh, we should be able to have a lot of fun on this transmission setup. In the next episode, we're gonna come back, we're gonna show you guys the build process on the transmission and get this thing ready to make some rips. Today we're back with Dale over at Gear Driven. We're gonna go over some of the things that we found when we disassembled the factory transmission, a couple things we had to replace, but overall it was in really good condition. So today we're gonna go through and build the transmission. Let's get into it, guys. Sure, man. How you been? Good, man. I'm All ready right. to see this trans get built and All right. learn a little bit of stuff. So, to kick it off, this is part two, guys. So, we're actually going to do the build today. The last video, you saw the tear down process. You saw how I went through it, explained what was wrong with the transmission and such. These are the parts that I took out of the transmission. This is your CRV parts. If you can just pan over here, I'll show you the, the Garrick stuff that's going in. So, you got your Garrick set one through four, the master rebuild kit from Synchrotech. That I mentioned in the last video with all the sleeves, the hubs, synchros, bearings, and this is the shifter mechanism and the hardware from the CRV. And this here is your CRV bell housing. I've already started to actually put the bearings in to kind of speed up process. So I installed the, the counter shaft bearing, this the main shaft bearing, and the, and the seal. These torque down, I always mark them to make sure that I remember that I torqued it down. And that's where we are right now. Today we're gonna to start the build process and um, I'll inform you as I go along. All right, so this is the counter shaft, CRV original counter shaft, 4.7 final drive. And this is gonna be the gear set, first gear, gear X first gear, and gear X second gear. All right, let me go ahead and prep the synchros. So the synchros on the transmission we had, the factory transmission were, were pretty shot. Right, no, the synchros, synchros weren't too bad. They're not too bad. When they get really bad, you see an impression on the outside here from where it touches the gear. When the synchros get really low. So you still have some gap there. So it's still a good synchro. But we're just gonna go ahead and refresh the transmission and change all the synchros out. Springs. And these you gotta also make sure that they're lubricated and they don't bind when you're installing them. These ones made out of this material. Yeah, this is um Syncrotech company that does aftermarket parts. So it's stronger. It's actually carbon deposit on the inside too. The carbon allows it to be more effective. Oh yeah. Rather than the brass. All right, so this is your first and second gear set from the CRV. We're going to be replacing the hub. If you can look on the inside, let me pull this out. These hubs take a beating after a while from shifting. So they start getting scored. Catch that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I usually replace them when they start getting like that. So today we're going to replace it with a Syncrotec brand. This is a heat treated hub. This is your first and second hub. All right, so the master rebuild kit includes hardened sleeves as well. So we're going to be changing all the sleeves from OEM to the Syncrotec brand, which is a hardened material. It's more durable. The 
This is the second gear synchro. And the second gear. Yeah, some of this stuff I reuse, but I always check to make sure that they're good. This is your friction dampener for second gear. You just want to make sure it's not completely worn down. And it installs right here in the second gear. All right, so next you have the Garex third and fourth set. So I just need to grab the third counter shaft gear and the fourth counter shaft. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll take it over to the press. All right, so that's the Garex first, second, third, fourth, and the counter shaft. I just need to get the OEM CRV fifth, install it, and then I'll press everything down. All right, so your counter shaft is almost complete. The only thing I have to install now is the bearing that goes at the top, and I simply tap this on. Final piece of the puzzle. Guys, do not use Loctite on this nut. I've seen it several times. Please do not Loctite it. Just torque it down to spec. It's reverse thread, by the way. To the vise we go. Yeah, so I don't over tighten this. I just clamp it down enough because you don't want to damage the gear. All right, so the counter shaft is complete. Next thing I'm gonna start doing is the main shaft. All right, so this is your Gear X main shaft. About to start the installation of all the other parts to complete the stack. All right, so this is your pile of used parts from the CRV. What I'm looking for here is just the parts that I need to reuse for the rebuild. So I need the distance colors and the bearings. Everything else is gonna be coming from the Syncrotech Master Rebuild Kit. And I'm gonna also replace the 3-4 hub as well. Yeah, so this is the original CRV 3-4 hub set. You can see how it's sticking right here. That's when you know it's getting really bad. It's gonna give you problems when it's shifting. You can also see the wear impression on the third gear side. And let's see what the fourth gear looks like. Yeah, it's not as bad. Yeah, but this is definitely no good. So that's why we're gonna be replacing both the hub and this, the um, sleeve from the Syncrotech Master Rebuild Kit. All right, so I have the main shaft done to the point where the third gear is installed, the third gear synchro is installed. This was the original 3-4 hub sleeve set. So I'm gonna separate this so I can show you all what I was talking about as far as where. If you look really close, you can see the score marks on the hub. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna be replacing that for a brand new Syncrotech one. Big difference. All right, so I just want to point something out really quick. Whenever you're installing the hubs, always make sure that you use something. I use just an old distance color. 
because you want to have something that actually sits on the inner portion of the hub and not the outside portion because you will crack this hub i've done it before so place something there that would actually give you some distance so it doesn't press against once you are pressing everything together so you don't destroy the hub yeah, i've done that a few times way back in the days yes yeah, turns nice and free this is good All right, so I'm completing the main shaft rebuild right now. The last piece I have to install is the bearing that goes at the top of the shaft. I'm just applying some oil so that it's easy to install and then I'll tap it on. Usually when you hear the change in sound, that's when you know it's all the way down. And that's it. Main shaft and the counter shaft rebuild complete. So what I'm doing right now is setting the main shaft up so I can do the main shaft end play. It's a very important part. Whenever you're using aftermarket parts, you want to make sure that the thrust is correct. You make sure you have the correct shim installed at the top so, you, so you, the transmission is not too tight. Measure twice and cut once, right? Measurements key. There you go. This tool you can purchase from Honda. It's very expensive. It's actually used to clamp the main shaft so that way you can attach your gauge and use a wrench and you actually pull the main shaft up to see what the measurement is. Once you get the correct measurement, then you know exactly what, what you need to subtract to get the correct shim to install. All right, so this is the shim that's gonna get replaced. This one is too thin, so I have to use a thicker shim so I get the correct clearance on the main shaft end play. So we've decided to go with the Quaif LSD or wheel drive LSD QDF 21U. This is actually a helical style LSD. Very good LSD if you want to do street track racing or if you want to do autocrossing. So it's general purpose, very good helical LSD. Um, what I've done so far is I've installed the differential bearings. I've also installed the, the final drive gear and also the transfer gear. And it's already torqued down to spec. Reason why I had to do that is because I had to get my shim. I had to order the shim from Honda 
just came in yesterday, so we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'm just about to start the build process. Um, like I said, the differential is already installed. I'm gonna start installing the gear cluster and then all the accessories and then close the casing up, so let's go. All right, got your gear set. You're gonna start by installing the forks. The one, two shift fork, three, four, and then the five reverse. Next we got the reverse idler gear. Reverse selector. Next thing I have to do is clean the surface and get the transmission case in ready to close. All right, so I'm just prepping the case so that I can apply some Honda bond and seal the case. And um, I just want to point out to you guys, I had to order shims for the main shaft as well. I have it written there 1.88 and this one's a 1.445. All right, so when you're closing the transmissions, I highly suggest to use Honda Bond. You stick with the OEM stuff, don't use the orange stuff. I'm not calling any brand names, but just stick with the original Honda stuff. And you wanna apply this evenly, not too much. Just apply an even layer around the surface of the casing. So now that the case is all closed, the next thing I have to do is neutral the forks and then lock the clip in the back that holds the counter shaft bearing in place. I don't know if you heard that click, but that click that you just heard is the counter shaft bearing getting locked in place. You can see that it's closed. Yep. Yeah. 
Looks good. I like to turn the shaft after I close it, make sure it's not too tight, make sure it feels good. This one feels really, really nice. Alright, so now that we have the transmission closed, the next thing we have to do is install the shifter arm. I've already had the springs installed and it's already torqued down. Um, so we have the two bolts here to finish the installation and as well as the detent bolts, the springs, the detent balls and then the washer. So that's the next step. Supplying a thin layer of Honda bond so I can install the shift arm. And I have the dowel pins, I have to install the dowel pins as well. Now the key to installing the shift arm is really straightforward. You just want to make sure that the, the forks are neutral. If you look inside, I'll show you what I mean. You can see straight through, no obstruction. Everything's lined up. So if it's, if it's like off like that, it's not going to go in properly. You just got to make sure it's all centered like that. All right, so before I actually tighten this up, I like to bench test the transmission just in case I have to reopen it so I don't have to break this. So I just leave it slackened for now, and then I'll go ahead and show you how I select all the gears, make sure that it's working properly. All right, first thing you want to check, make sure that it moves up and down nice. This has a spring in it, so it's a little bit stiffer. So you may have to apply a little bit more force to get it into reverse. And I turn the shaft as I select the gears. So the spring is what actually keeps the fork in alignment. The stiffer the spring is, it, it keeps the fork so that way whenever you shift, it gives you like a ratchet shift. So you don't have that sloppy feeling that the shifter box gives you, like an OEM shifter box. So that's why they came up with these bigger springs. And there's a lot of tension on these springs. So when you're putting them in, just gotta make sure you thread it first so that way you don't cross thread it. Cause if you cross thread this, you're gonna be in major problems. You're gonna have to change the cover. So just run it down with your hands first and then you could um, use your ratchet or your gun. And after I install these springs, I always like to check the shifter again, make sure that it's working properly. All right, so next we're gonna install the OEM speed sensor. Um, I usually suggest the guys, depends on the way your engine bay is laid out, you can install, I mean, you can fill the transmission either from the speed sensor or you can actually fill it from the reverse switch. So whichever is easiest accessible for you, right? What fluid would you typically recommend for, you know, for your trans builds? Trans builds, I usually tell people to use the Honda OEM manual transmission fluid, Honda MTF. You can break it in with that, and if you decide to like go with like an aftermarket brand, you can do a synchro mesh blend. That's fine. So we're just about done here, huh? Yep, almost done. It all went super smooth, man. Super you've, you've been smooth. doing this a long time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, can, I can tell, man. You know all this, like the back of your hand, you yeah. explain everything while you're doing it. Like you yeah. honestly did not skip a beat, man. It's, yeah. it's been a super cool experience. I started this as a hobby. I mean, I went to college for communication. I had no idea about cars. Started messing with cars, started building cars, my own personal cars, started breaking cars mainly the transmissions. 
So eventually I reached out to a friend of mine and um, he used to do my transmission bills. So after work, I'd go to his shop and hang out and just watch him do it. Long story short, eventually I was like, you know what, let me try doing this on my own. <laughs> I started doing it on my own, build my own cars, build a couple of French transmissions. And then I said, you know, I can maybe turn this hobby into a job. So eventually I left my job and then I started Gear Driven LLC. So here we are today. That's awesome. Yeah. How long you been doing it? Uh, I started in 2007. Oh, wow. It's a long <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, right? it's a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's a long I, I can tell so you got a lot of experience in here, Bill, man. Yeah, yeah. And I started in my garage, too. I did this in my garage for a lengthy period of time. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. The hobby and the passion turns into the, the business. And the business, yeah. When you love what you do, you don't work a day in your you life. You don't right? work a day in your life. That is a true <laughs> statement. Remember that. I, I can tell you love what you do, brother. Oh, yeah, and, for sure. And you're really good at it. Yeah, so. yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, so final step, right? You got to seal this thing, seal of approval. Make sure you guys know that it's guaranteed work. So, I have these stickers. Um, I started doing this, uh, I think about five, six years ago, I believe. Maybe more, I can't remember. But the number 956 is going to be this unit. That's the number of transmissions I've done that I've logged to date. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of yeah. transmissions. Yeah, it's a lot. So I'm almost at 1,000. And actually, <laughs> let me put this plug real quick. Transmission number 1,000 is going to be special, all right? I'm not saying what it is just yet, but I may give something away. Just leave it at that. <laughs> 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 we'll, have to, we'll have to check that out later on. Yeah, for sure. Here we go. Here it is. All-wheel drive trans complete. Complete. My man. Much appreciated, man. Thank you.